Part three about the giraffe and the Pelly and me. And I dreamed about walnuts, shouted the monkey. A walnut fresh from the tree is scrumptious, glumptious, so flavorly, savory, so sweet to eat that it makes me all wobbly just thinking about it. At exactly that moment, a huge white Rolls Royce pulled up right below us and a chauffeur in a blue and gold uniform got out. He was carrying an envelope in one gloved hand. Good heavens, I whispered. That's the Duke of Hampshire's car. Who is he? asked the giraffe. He's the richest man in England, I said. The chauffeur knocks on the door of the grubber. He looked up and saw us. He saw the giraffe, the pelly, the monkey and me all staring down at him from above. But not a muscle moved on his face, not an eyebrow was raised. The, the chauffeurs of very rich men are never surprised by anything they see. The chauffeur said, His Grace the Duke of Hampshire has instructed me to deliver this envelope to the ladderless window cleaning company. That's us, cried the monkey. The giraffe said, be so good as to open the envelope and read it to us. Read the letter to us. The chauffeur unfolded the letter and began to read. Dear sirs, I saw your notice on, as I drove by this morning. I have been looking for a decent window cleaner for the last 50 years, but I have not found one yet. My house has 677 windows in it, not counting the greenhouse, and all of them are filthy. Kindly come and see me as soon as possible. Yours truly, Hemshire. That added to the chauffeur in a voice filled with awe and respect was written by His Grace the Duke of Hemshire in his own hand. The giraffe said to the chauffeur, Please tell His Grace the Duke of Hemshire the Duke that we will be with him as soon as possible. The chauffeur touched his cap and got back into the Rolls Royce. Whoopee! shouted the monkey. Fantastic! cried the pelican. That must be the best window cleaning job in the world. Billy, said the giraffe, what is, that, what is the house called and how do we get there? It is called Hampshire's house, I said. It's just over the hill. I'll show you the way. The way. We're off! cried the monkey. We're, up, we're off to see the duke. The giraffe stooped low and went through the tall door. The monkey jumped off the windowsill onto the giraffe's back. The pelican with me in his beak, hanging on for dear life, flew across and perched on the very top of the giraffe's head. 
and away we went. It wasn't long before we came to the great gates of Hampshire's house, and as we and as the giraffe moved slowly up the great wide driveway, we all began to just to, to feel just a little bit nervous. That what's this what's he like, this duke? the giraffe asked. I don't know, I said, but he's very, very fabulous and very rich. People say he has twenty-five gardeners just to look after his flower beds. Soon the huge house itself came into view. And what a house it was! It was like a palace! It was bigger than a palace! Just look at those windows, cried the monkey. They'll keep us going forever. Then suddenly we heard a man's voice a short distance away to the right. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't, I, I want those big black ones at the top of the tree, the man was shouting. Get me those great big black ones. We peered around the bushes and saw an old man with an immense white moustache standing under a tall cherry tree and pointing his walking stick in the air. Get. There was another, there was a ladder against the tree and another man who was probably a gardener was up the ladder. Get me those great big Juicy ones right at the very top, the old man was shouting. I can't reach them, your grace, the gardener called back. The ladder isn't long enough. Damnations, shouted the duke. I was so looking forward to eating those big ones. <laughs>